Hi everybody, this is Erwin from Ausdroid. Um, as you can see here, we've got the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note, um, the phone that's been billed as the phablet, not quite a phone, not quite a tablet. Um, we managed to get this from our friends at Moby City, who have an exclusive on the device at the moment. And this is going to be a quick uh, first impressions run through of what makes this phone so unique. Uh, so let's start with um, what's in the box. So this isn't an unboxing video um, at all, but I'm just going to show you what comes with it. So we've got the device here, we've got uh, your normal manual, power charger, USB cable, set of headphones there. Um, but let's run through what uh, we can expect to see with this device. Um, so right now it is running a 1.4 gigahertz uh, dual core Exynos processor. Um, so this is uh, clocked at 200 megahertz more than the Samsung Galaxy S2 at the moment, um, but is actually the same uh, CPU. It is a 5.3 inch uh, Super AMOLED screen, uh, which is 1280 by 800. Um, it's supported on all carriers, all the major carriers at the moment, including Telstra Next G, um, as well as Vodafone's 850 megahertz frequency. Um, it's got uh, one gig of internal memory, uh, sorry, one gig of RAM, two gigs of internal memory, um, and 16 gigs of storage. Uh, we've got an eight megapixel camera on it, uh, and uh, no NFC at this point in time. Uh, so what we'll start off with is, uh, you can't really see the comparison of the size here, but what is a 5.3 inch phone compared to a everyday uh, run of the mill phone. So what I've got here is the Motorola Atrix, which is a four inch screen and a relatively small device. Um, and you can just see there how much bigger the uh, Galaxy Note is to that. So uh, now I'll quickly run through what makes the Galaxy Note so unique. Um, and that is the stylus that we can see at the bottom here. So, um, this is a, just a pen that slides into the bottom, as you can see there. Um, and when you use it on the screen, it replaces your normal finger and multi-touch input. So let's run through the interface. So you can just see your standard Samsung TouchWiz lock screen there, um, but it has a bit of an ice cream sandwich ring effect to it. Um, and as I mentioned, you can just use the stylus to scroll through the screen. Um, as well as to um, take screen, scrap, screen captures. Uh, it actually has a button on it. I'm not sure if you can see. There's a little button here that when you press down, you can use it to um, get your normal gestures up on the screen. So if I press that button and push up, I get the menu. And if I press that button and push to the left, I will go back um, like the normal keys on the screen. Um, now the thing is that once you've got um, the stylus in use, uh, you actually can't do finger input. So um, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, I'll just go to multi-touch. And what you can see is I've got five fingers. It actually does up to 10. But when I put the stylus on there, no other finger input works. Um, and the multi-touch application doesn't know what to do about that. Uh, so what you can actually do is um, when you hold down the button on the stylus, you can press on, double tap on the screen and it'll bring up a memo, which you can quickly draw into and then save. Now this stylus is actually really responsive and the text recognition is so clear on it. Um, as, and it's just so easy to use. Another nifty feature that um, Samsung have included with this is if you hold down the stylus button and hold on the screen, it'll capture the screen and then it'll take you into an editing program where you can actually draw on the screen. Um, you can then save that and email it to people um, or just keep it for later use. So this is how they showed the um, where you could take a picture of the maps, um, send it to a friend and say, uh, I am here. Um, so um, that's pretty much the stylus. It doesn't have many other functions um, other than that. 
Uh, there is actually a modified um, text input that you can do with the stylus. Uh, so if I just go to new um, text and I need to switch to the Samsung keypad. You can actually press a button here to put into the stylus recognition and you can write this way. And it seems to be pretty good at picking it up. If anyone's used any old stylus phones, it seems to have a similar dash forward, dash back to do backspace uh, sort of recognition. Uh, so that's yeah, pretty much everything you can do with the stylus at this point in time. Um, so I'll quickly run through uh, what else makes this phone different to the regular Samsung Galaxy S2. Uh, so it has your TouchWiz interface here with you know, your scroll and uh, everything else. Um, it has S-Memo, which is the way of doing the stylus memo, as well as S-Choice, which takes you into um, Samsung apps, but apps that are customized to incorporate the stylus input. Um, so one of the only drawbacks of this phone that I can see at the moment is that it doesn't seem to, um, the 5.3 inch screen is great at, um, in size and being able to um, uh, get good clarity on uh, what the device, uh, you know, what you can see on the device. The only problem is that some applications don't quite know what to do with that. Um, to give you an example, um, after I first booted up the phone, it downloaded the latest version of the market. When I actually slide across to the left, it doesn't let me slide across any further than just that little column there. Um, now this seems to be because it's going for a larger screen resolution and um, kind of blocking it up a bit. Um, so you can see everything is super big on this. Um, and when we go into an app, uh, you can see it's your standard market looking page here. But if I rotate it, this is where we start to notice some problems. It will actually bring up a panel up the side um, to see the app's description and the pictures in the app. And it will have the main part here. If anyone's used a honeycomb tablet, you'll notice that this is how the market seems to work on uh, that. So you can see that you can't actually, you can scroll through the text here. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. You can scroll through the text here. Um, but you can't really read it that well. So this seems to be a drawback of the fact that uh, it doesn't, apps don't seem to know what display they've got to dis put on this, whether it's a phone or a tablet display. Um, you can also see this with some of the um, games that are on the phone. Uh, so I've got Solitaire, which I just downloaded from the market and it's a small box on the large screen. So you've got this wasted real estate here. Um, and one of the uh, more popular games on the Android market at the moment, Dungeon Defenders, um, also seems to get confused with uh, what is actually happening on the screen and it cuts off some of the buttons on it. So we'll just let that load. So otherwise the actual screen quality is fantastic. Uh, this is what we can expect to see in the Galaxy Nexus phone, um, but with a higher pixel density because it'll be on a 4.65 inch screen instead. Uh, so let's go into solar play here. And yeah, so um, here we go. So. What you might not be able to see is there are buttons actually cut off here and here um, and so it makes it quite difficult to get around in this game anyway. So um, otherwise the phone is very responsive. The 1.4 gigahertz um, Exynos processor gives this phone a lot of oomph um, and uh, so far I've been using it for about a day. Um, and am very much enjoying the device. Uh, so as I said, this is uh, exclusive with Moby City at the moment. So you can pick this up from them for uh, 869. Uh, that's uh, including a 12 month warranty. Um, so I will have a more detailed review in the next week or so, uh, where I'll really start to point out some of the strengths and uh, some of the possible weaknesses of the device. Uh, so thanks for watching.